Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Barra. Welcome back to my Mondays. So I recently had a buddy ask how to do a bullet time effect on a Bifrost sim. So he wants to have a camera sort of spin around his object, this liquid simulation, and then around a certain frame, have the liquid simulation stop, the camera keep moving so the liquid's kind of frozen in time, and then it kind of picks back up. And this is really pretty simple to do inside of Maya. The first thing you want to do is get your Bifrost simulation in the form of an Olympic cache. And this is something that you would do by going to the meshing options for the Bifrost liquid. So if we go up into the liquid shape, this controls all the information about how that's going to be displayed in the viewport, as well as its meshing information. So you just kind of go in there and we'll just go to frame one to turn this meshing on here. You enable the meshing, that's going to go ahead and start to generate the polygon mesh. And you can see that shadow popped on as soon as that meshing operation finished. So if we hide the particles, you can see there is our, our polygon mesh. So what that polygon mesh made from the Bifrost liquid, the next thing you need to do is export out a simple cache. So you'll go to Alembic and you'll say export selection um, to Alembic file. Now I've already gone ahead and done that and saved this out. So instead of taking the time to do it now, I'm just going to delete all this and go ahead and load up that Bifrost cache. So we'll just go back to the cache menu, go into Alembic and tell it to import in the Alembic file of this splash. And you can see it's a little bit over a gig. So we bring that guy in. I think I've got a material that I can assign to this already, kind of sitting in my scene here. So now we've got this liquid in our scene. And right now this liquid is being driven by the, the overall time node inside of Maya. And we want to do a retiming effect. So there's a couple ways of doing this. One way of doing it would be to go to the animations, go to keyframe, and do a scene time warp. The problem with doing a scene time warp is that's going to warp the whole time of the scene including the camera move. And in this example, we want just the liquid to freeze in time and the camera move to continue that we're going to animate or set up. So what we want to do is we want to basically get a function curve on the liquid, um, on the cache node, instead of being driven by that time node, we're going to break that connection and have it be driven by the actual a function curve that we set up ourselves. So all we have to do is go to the Olympic node and you can see the time parameter here is, you know, if I go to something like frame 15 or whatever, the time parameter is going to go to, to frame 15, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually break this connection and we're going to set some keyframes on that so that we can drive it with a function curve. So we'll go um, now back to frame one. <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll set this to frame one here. And I'll just right mouse click on top of that guy and say set key. Looks like my simulation lasted 35 frames. So we'll go to frame 35. We'll set this guy to be frame 35. We'll set a key on that. So now if we look at our graph editor, you can see there's our function curve. Now, obviously we want to make this have just straight handles on that so that frame 10 is equal to frame 10 and frame 15 is equal to frame 15. So with that done, we can now pick a frame and it looked like frame 15 was actually pretty good. We can now pick a frame that we want to use as the, the, the hold, right? Like right around here, I just want that, that stuff to hold for whatever, I don't know, 10 frames or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, insert a new keyframe on that guy. Then we'll go out 10 frames to frame 25. And at frame 25, I'm also going to insert a new keyframe. And I'm just going to take this function curve now and lower that value down to frame 15. And put our tangents back to uh, flat for this whole curve here. So the last thing that we want to do is we want to take this last keyframe and we need to push that back out um, 15 or 10 frames also. So we'll go to frame 45. So now we have our animation, you know, basically every frame is equal to, to, um, to the number of the cache. We hold for 10 frames in this nice flat area and then we just pick back up. And that's going to give me the ability to have that, that hold happen there. So this is, this is all set up now. It's been retimed, pretty straightforward. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just animate my camera kind of spinning around this guy. So we'll just go ahead and we'll create a new camera. And I'll create a camera with an aim, and we'll look through that camera. We'll just actually hit the frame F key to frame in on that, so that my aim point is sort of centered on that guy. And we can sort of jump back to my perspective now, and I just want to use my arc tool to, uh, to quickly lay down the motion path that we want the camera to follow. So we'll just say curves, create a three-point arc tool, so we'll just sort of, I don't know, set up an arc. Right around there, that looks pretty good. And we'll just rise that up a little bit. Looks pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and grab the back half of our camera. Just ungroup it real fast. Add into our selection this guy, that curve, and then we'll jump over to constraints and we'll do a motion path, attached to motion path, 
and set not to follow. So we'll just hit time slider based. So now if we rewind back to frame one, look through this camera, let's just update that guy one more time by hitting that back arrow button. The camera, to, the orientation, you have to give it a kick to get it, to get it started there by clicking the rewind button one time. But once you do that, it's pretty much set up and now we can start doing a, doing a play blast or watching our animation. So we'll just do a simple play blast for this guy. So you can see here comes our camera. It kind of follows through on this guy. And around frame 15, the liquid holds, just sits there and holds and holds and holds. And then in a few seconds, it's going to um, obviously kick back up and start moving at frame 26. So then the liquid simulation starts kind of coming back in. And that's basically how you can do a really simple bullet effect inside of Maya um, by throwing a function curve onto the time attribute on the load for the Olympic file. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. All right, so now that it's all play blasted out, you can see that, that kind of little subtle bullet time effect that happens there. So it's a really simple little thing, but it looks pretty cool. I kind of like it. And hopefully, um, you know, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Thanks again for checking out Maya Mondays. Take the time to hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate you guys watching the videos. Cheers, everyone.